The Warhammer Plus model has arrived. I better find a use for it in my army. So I'm a subscriber to Warhammer Plus and a couple of weeks ago, the new Orc model arrived. I don't collect Age of Sigma and I thought in the back of my mind, maybe I'll try and convert it into something for my Orcs. But I couldn't picture anything that I actually wanted to do with it and I was worried I was just gonna offload it onto eBay or throw it into the cupboard with the rest of the pile of shame. But today, I wanna to challenge myself and see if I can come up with an idea to help add to my collection of Orcs by converting this model. I've painted up a few different conversions for all characters in the past. I'll show you them later if we need an intermission, but otherwise, let's just get stuck straight in. One model I don't have is a big mech with custom force field. Surprising because there have been plenty of fun and competitive builds over the last couple of editions that use them. I think the shape and pose of this model could work really well for that idea. Whoa, okay, I didn't realise Age of Sigma models come on a standard 3.5 metre base. I'd better pick out a smaller one. I've trawled through lots of different spare parts from Orcs, Space Marines, Imperial Knights and Death Guard, and I'm picking out anything that I think an Orc mech might tinker with and also stick together to try and make a KFF. I know that the majority of this model will remain the same, so my process today is going to be to start building most of the model, but hold off committing anything on his back or his left arm, as these are the likely spots that I'll want to alter. Yeah, I love this. A weapon swap here I think will be quite pain free. I should even be able to get away without any green stuff, because any of the gaps can be concealed underneath the shoulder armour plates. The custom Mega Blaster with the big mech arm looks at home here, and if I aim it downward, it shouldn't block the view of our close combat weapon or the backpack. I want the backpack to be a big, prominent part of the model, and I want it to tell a story about the mech. I really love the idea of using a large piece from a Dreadnought, a tank, or a knight to suggest that our mech at some point played a hand in toppling a powerful foe. So I'm testing and spinning parts over and over, trying to find a way to use one of them as my starting piece. Half of a knight gauntlet sits really well across the model's back, and then I can use some stray engine looking parts to beef it up a bit. I have some different custom force field parts from a few other kits, which I think are likely going to be the Mega Knobs, Gorkonaut, and maybe even a Daka Jet. I'm shuffling around parts and temporarily sticking them in place with blue tack. I move the model around and inspect to make sure it looks good from each angle. Now normally I would leave this model in several pieces because having them in a sub-assembly is much easier to paint. However, I didn't think that would look pretty for a video, so instead we will just have the custom Mega Blaster arm removed. I've primed the model before gluing sand to the base, as this helps the sand to stick even better. Sand, and of course, cat litter. I've chosen to go with a black primer here because I'm happy working with dark colours on this model and more importantly there are so many hard to reach places that will look horrible if they're left white. Having them remain black actually does me a favour as well of looking like shadows. The sand on the weapon will help with achieving the weathered and rusty look later on. Once dry I'm adding a thin down layer of PVA over the top to seal the sand in place. Now's a good time to talk about converting models and why I do it. For me, there's two main reasons that spring to mind. One is that a model is no longer available or just looks a bit outdated and I want something fresh looking for my army. And the second reason is it's for my orcs. And I love the idea that as orc players, we have this green light just to be able to loot from other armies and factions. And it's so much fun to do. An example of wanting to spruce up an older model can be found in my Death Guard showcase where I've used a Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought with added tentacles to replace the smaller and older Hell Brute model. I've made a video on my Orc trucks, but a couple of Orc character models that I've redesigned are, first up, a big mech with the Relic souped up Shocker from 8th edition to stand out from my regular big mechs with shock attack guns. I use the Necromunda Ambot model and the Teleporter gun to look like an over the top shock attack gun. The other model is my Warboss on bike. 
I wanted this to be a bigger, larger, more impressive war biker. So he's managed to loot himself a Primaris Outrider bike from one of them, how you say, beakies. Back to the mech as I start painting. Across my army of orcs I have a few different paint schemes for their skin. The beast snaggers have a paler tone, the Gretchen a bright green, and the rest of my orcs are somewhere in the middle and the recipe still varies as I learn new styles from watching other painters. I started with dark greens and then decided shortly into the process that I wanted a different look. Remember that it's not the end of the world when you make mistakes or change your mind. Just let it dry and then paint over the top. For a high level tutorial, check out the Heavy Metal Team's guide for painting orc skin on YouTube. Even if you only select a couple of the steps from their process, you can achieve a really nice looking result. I'm chopping and changing between regular paints, shades and contrast paints, with thinner to create glazes where I need. So whilst I'm painting in the background, I'll tell you a little more about what was important to me when putting this model together. I needed the model to be legal to play, which is why I swapped the base size. Whilst I wanted my own unique model, my opponent would also need to understand what it was, which is why I've used some of those various iconic force field parts. Finally, I want this to match the rest of my orc army, so there will be a similar painting style to my other orcs. I love Lead Belcher, but if you haven't tried it yet, treat yourself to a bottle of Vallejo Gunmetal Grey. Out of the bottle and check out how smoothly it goes on. It separates really fast on the wet palette, but jiggle your brush around and you'll be back in business. There's quite a lot of metal to base and block out on this model, so having a thin metal that can roll on in one coat not only saves me time, but it's a step in the painting process which can be a bit dull. So the time I save here, I'll find another area on the model and invest it there. A wash of Agrax Earthshade over the top to make the metals look old and dirty. I'm going for a red coloured armour and will start quite dark. Here I'm mixing corn red with black, about a 1 to 1 ratio. I'll end up painting over most of this, however in the shadow areas this will be a nice dark colour. I mix in some Mephiston red to the corn and the black for the next layer highlight. And my goal is to keep the paints quite thin so one colour should have a smoother transition to the next. I'm happy to put a little bit more time in here with some additional highlight layers. You can see that there are other base colours on the model now and there are a variety of browns. My reason being that I need some bland colours in there in order to make the weapon, the red armour and the green skin stand out. I'm working my way brighter with Evil Sun Scarlet and then Wild Rider Red. Reichland Flesh Shade is another wash colour I can use on these fabric parts to provide some variety to my standard Agrax. Some basic black armour panels with grey highlighting is a way to prevent overdoing the model with red and making him look like one of those attack dog suit men. I'll mix up a few portions of the metallic areas on the mini with a dark gold. I'll end up washing these with Agrax and then weathering with a watered down Nihilic Oxide. You could just use a light blue paint as well. The next area to focus on is the weathering of the chopper and the KFF, starting with Typhus Corrosion. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I love it. The fine grit inside the paint provides more texture, which isn't as bulky as the sand, so this will assist in transitioning from those areas. I want the chopper to be well worn from all of his battles, so I'm applying quite a lot. The KFF, however, must mean more to him, because I'm only applying a small amount here. Have you tried this product yet? Have you even witnessed the witchcraft? This is dirty down rust and it's a great fast way to achieve rust weathering on your minis. I was going to make a video on this, but it would only go for 30 seconds. I'd open the bottle, slap some on, and you would have a mini spinning on a turntable. That's it. I'm adding this in small amounts to generic metallic areas where I think water would generally pool and I'm also painting it on large amounts on the chopper and parts of the backpack to help these two areas come to life. The solution can feel like it has a mind of its own when it comes to the colour finish. So I would recommend practicing by basing some random bits in lead belcher, washing them in null oil or agrax, and then experimenting. 
you will see that the colors change and react different and you can manipulate brightness and look with some thinner. A cheeky small step here is to take your brightest orange, mine is Troll Slayer Orange. I'm thinning this down and adding small parts into a few of the rust recess areas as an added little something something. There's the blue oxide weathering I mentioned earlier. Bam! I'm really happy with how it's looking. I've decided to risk it for the biscuit and to paint the KFF power ball things. Yeah, then. I run into two hurdles here. And one is that we have a board game set up in the man cave downstairs where I would usually airbrush. So it's all brushes instead today. And instead of having one simple light source, I've got a handful. I'll end up trying to keep it simple, but you'll see what I mean as we progress. I'm starting with a bright white and I'm adding these to areas that I believe the light would shine onto as well. Then I'll start adding blues as a glaze, but I don't think I invest enough time and patience during these steps as I was probably wanting to allocate the same amount of time that I would with my airbrush. The base will match the rest of my orc army, which is yellow sand, a wash, some dry brushing, and then a selection of grass tufts. Then my favourite part, the victory lap around the base, signifying that there is nothing left to do. And just a silver edge highlight on the medals signifying that there is nothing left to do. <laughs> this was fun. I'll queue up the disco table for some final shots. Thanks so much for watching me fumble my way through this model. This wasn't supposed to be a painting guide, but instead a ride along as I try and custom build a new model for my green army. I'm still searching for feedback on these videos and also some ideas on what you would like to see. So please comment below and point me in the right direction. Thanks so much for your support as always. If you want to take it up a notch in scale, why not have a look at my attempt to loot an orc truck from Imperial Faction? Or if you're after a painting guide, check out some easy paint schemes with some colour blending in these Tyranid High Fleets. 